Hey guys, welcome back to the layout once again. Uh, I'm going to squeeze in a really quick layout update here. Um, you'll have to forgive me because really not a ton has happened, so I don't have uh, too much content to share in this video, but I feel like it has been some time since the last video, so I just wanted to let everyone know that I'm still here and I'm still working on the layout. Um, the delay has been mostly due to the fact that I've just uh, gone back to school um, in the beginning of school as many of you know is typically very hectic so I haven't had a ton of time to get any work done um, so again nothing to really show on the layout aside from a bit of cork work uh, so like down here I have decided to uh, extend the end scale cork that you see here um, out a bit because essentially what we're gonna have over here is sort of a s-curve dirt road um, so I wanted to bring this up just a bit. Uh, you can see I've worked on getting uh, some cork in here that'll bring the grade crossing up to rail height. And then over here it'll drop down so you'll have the full disparity between ground level and uh, mainline track height. And then uh, also you guys, let me know what you think. Um, I'm planning on doing an overpass down here. I was trying to come up with a way to hide this hole. Um, so I know Rick's products makes a uh, modern highway overpass and I was thinking of doing a relatively uh, close cut uh, retaining wall on either side with the overpass above it and I feel like that would frame that hole a little better than just the plain drywall and backdrop. So let me know what you think. Uh, it'll probably come out just, I don't know, maybe a few inches. I think the width of the overpass is like three and a half inches. I might do even a little bit less than that but I think a retaining wall that then tapers down a bit um, that could work pretty well. Or maybe even a square retaining wall that just goes straight up and straight in. I don't really know. So if you guys have any thoughts, let me know. Um, but I want to get that figured out because very soon I'm going to start uh, with scenery in here. And in fact, speaking of that, um, down on this end, again, this isn't anything finished. just want to show you I've been collecting materials. So I got some uh, Arizona Rocket Mineral Company um, supplies here, and I actually have three more bags of different ballast on the way. So I've been playing around with this trying to get the right uh, color mixtures and I think I've finally landed on how I'm gonna do my dirt and ballast which uh, honestly in my opinion I think getting the right dirt especially in areas like over here this uh, Crawford Nebraska uh, having the dirt right really makes the scene um, so I'm feeling pretty good about what I came up with but of course I don't really have much to show um, but actually I did, let me let me pull this over here. I did make a couple of samples on just some scrap foam I have here. I should have pulled this out before. Um, you can see here, this is sort of a, what I might do for the right-of-way access roads. So if I turn around here uh, and take a look up here, this is a photo um, from a trains magazine. And this actually is Crawford Hill. This is uh, near the top of the hill at Belmont which is this scene right here, hence why I posted it over here. Uh, but you can see, if you look at that right-of-way access road, there's not really any ballast to it. It's pretty uh, dusty and compact dirt. And then um, it's actually sort of two tones. So you can see like the, the crushed stuff looks like a, a very light tan, but then in the middle you have sort of like a, a pinkish stone look to it. Um, so I tried to do that here and I think it turned out pretty close. So I'll be doing a video on uh, how I did this. Um, and actually I am going to do a video series as well on all the scenery over here in Crawford um, and elsewhere on the layout. So I'm going to break the layout up into distinct scenes, even though it is, you know, it's a continuous main line. Um, I'm roughly able to break it up into different scenes. Um, so Crawford extends beyond the road that I'll do there, pretty much to the corner of the wall there. Um, I'll have a whole video series on all of this coming up very soon, um, which is sort of why I wanted to do this update too, because I wanted your opinion on what to do down there, uh, among other things. And actually, I'll be recycling this old cement plant. Um, I'm actually going to cut it right down the middle, which works out nicely. You can see I've already made a cut there. I think it'll be easier. I'll just separate all the parts and then cut it and then reassemble it. But um, I started to pull it apart. So we'll do half of that depth. We'll go behind this track here where my SD40-2 is sitting. So that black line, that'll be the depth of where that um, elevator goes. So we'll have those four silos plus um, two grain bins on either end, um, or one grain bin on either end, but it'll be two overall. 
Uh, so I'll only need to get one of those because again I can just cut that in half and use the halves along the backdrop. Um, so yeah, that'll that'll be its own video within this series on doing scenery in here. Uh, so moving on to other things, um, quick question for you guys, actually a couple more questions. One, I put a uh, TCS motherboard in here and right now I just have it paired to a mobile decoder. Um, and originally I was thinking, well, I'll put the motherboard in there and then get a TCS wow sound decoder, because of course those naturally pair well together. Um, I'm thinking, however, I'd rather have uh, lock sound in this. So I don't know, have you guys ever installed a 21 pin lock sound decoder on a Keep Alive board? And if so, does that work? Um, I know how to do it just like the regular Keep Alive capacitor, how you can solder that right to the the lock sound board, but I already have a motherboard in here, and if it's not going to work with the lock sound, then I'll have to figure something else out. So uh, just let me know if you guys have any knowledge in that area. Uh, and then also, this is actually my first BNSF unit ever. Um, you can see it's pretty beat up, so I'm I'm planning on reworking it, uh, touching up the paint in places, touching up the weathering, adding more details, replacing the lighting, and all that. Um, but the one thing, one problem I do have. And this might just be a matter of replacing the trucks all together, since I do have a couple of spare inner mountain trucks, so if I can get those to work somehow, that'd be good. But, you can see as I roll this over the turnout, if you watch that truck closely, I think the wheels are out of gauge, um, because they always grab on the frogs of turnouts. Um, and I don't, I don't think the actual wheel depth is like, it's not a pizza cutter. I mean, it looks like the, the actual flange is um, not too tall or anything like that. So if you guys have any uh, tips or ideas on what's going on there, it's actually even worse on the front truck. It, it tends to lift the entire locomotive up, which is a little annoying. Um, so before I repower that and get a decoder in there, I want to figure that out. So again, if you have any ideas there, let me know. Um, the only project I've really been working on since the last update, I think, is this box car I have here. I um, mean, the lighting here is not great, so it doesn't really do it justice, but you can see um, I did a pretty heavy fade on the car. Uh, there's a bit of graffiti here and there. I think this tiny little tag turned out pretty good. Um, but what I like most about it is that it has that rippled panel look to it. I don't know if you guys can tell. I'll throw in some uh, photos that I took outdoors, but um, I just did that with initially an airbrush fade and then I did uh, oil paints dry brushed on there. And I think that looks pretty cool um, and really gives it a 3D metal panel look to it. So uh, anyway, that turned out pretty good. I was going to sell it, but I think I'm going to keep this one because uh, I really like the way it looks. And then also, let me grab this out from under here. As I was talking about that, I totally forgot. But I did make a little uh, photography module. Sorry about that. Set this guy right here. So you can see, um, this is what I use. This is what I use to do outdoor photography for any models that I've completed. Um, and I think it turned out pretty good. So these, the, the look you see here is uh, roughly the scenery that I'll be doing on the layout. Um, I have sort of changed the method on how I do the access roads. So this is actually just real dirt from Cajon Pass that I, I didn't mix anything else into it. Um, so for, for the indoor lighting, I would like that dirt color to be a little lighter because um, it's kind of dark as it is, unless I really sand it down like I have. Um, and then the grass is pretty much what I'll use. I'd still like to uh, add some weeds. It looks pretty uniform right now, but uh, I think the color is pretty good. And then the ballast for the most part is just Woodland Scenics Gray Blend. And then I added a bit of buff ballast in there as well. And then I think I'm going to change the way I weather track. I really like the way this turned out. Um, I actually did sort of a, a whitish gray fade on all of the ties at first with an airbrush. And then I masked off the ties so that I could then airbrush the rails with sort of a tannish brown color. And I think that turned out really good. So I had actually tried that originally over here, the airbrushing, but I felt like there was too much overspray. Um, but I think if I put like a box behind it and then have a vacuum going, I should be able to control that. And I really like the way the airbrushing effect looks. Um, so anyway, guys, 
I, I honestly it is not possible for me to do a, a short update I always say that I have nothing to show and what sucks about this one is that I pretty much don't have anything to show and uh, somehow I still dragged it out to 10 minutes so um, anyway as I said at the beginning of the video I really just wanted to touch base with you guys show you um, the thought that I've been putting into the layout and I promise I've not stepped away from it um, I've just I don't know, it's it's a fair amount of research and tedious thought on like, oh, well, how high does the cork need to be so I can get the grade crossing right and all that stuff. So um, now that I've got that out of the way, um, I'm going to start moving forward on getting the scenery done. And then elsewhere around the layout, I also need to do a bit more uh, scenery prep. Let me move this. So like if we walk around doo -doo -doo -doo, um, over here, right, like this is still not covered in the paper subshell. Um, and then around the corner, right over here, actually I might as well ask you too what you guys think I should do over here. This is a pretty deep scene where something could go. Um, I'm thinking just landscape, uh, but if you guys have an idea, like, should it just be flat like it is? Or should I do sort of a, a shallower cut? So nothing as drastic as I have like over here, I don't think. But maybe something a little lower would work over here. Um, so. Anyway, I know there's a lot of questions and not a lot of show and tell, um, but hopefully you guys enjoy anyway. And uh, with the next time I see you, hopefully I'll have a bit of scenery done in Crawford. I'll be doing an entire scenery, uh, scenery series on that, as I said. And then of course, there will be plenty of updates uh, anytime I get anything done on the layout. Uh, so as always guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.